Hey guys, here I am all alone in the auditorium, praying that you guys are staying safe out here in the snow. I'm assuming it's probably snowing a lot right now. I don't know because this is being filmed in the morning before it snows, but I pray that you guys are staying safe, maybe doing some sledding when the snow stops tonight. Um, But here's what we want to do. Tonight we were going to be in week three of our series, This Is Our Sex Talk. If you remember week one, we said that sex is good and sex is powerful. When done, created by God, and done in the confines God has set for it. One man, one woman in marriage, sex is good, it's powerful, and God blesses that. Then last week we said technology is good and powerful, and tonight we were going to talk through the idea, and we will talk through here in a little bit, the idea that confession is good and powerful, that confessing, opening up, sharing your story, letting God in, letting other people in is good and it is powerful. So let me start. Let me tell you a story that I didn't confess for about five years of my life. So this is a story of how I broke my nose. Uh, me and my friend in sixth grade were out, we're playing football in the backyard, and behind my house was a house where a girl older than me lived and a girl younger than me lived, and they were friends with the girl that I had a crush on in sixth grade. Now, if you know anything about sixth grade crushes, what you do is you don't act nice. No, you tease the person that you like. So here, me and my friend, we're making fun of this girl. We're teasing her, and, and uh, we're, we're laughing about it. We're high-fiving. Oh, that was a good one, dude. And all of a sudden, I look back, and there's an apple tree that overhung the backyard of, of my friend's house. And, and the girl had picked up an apple and thrown it right at my face. And so we're laughing. That was a good one, buddy. And a red delicious right from my face, pow, hits me straight in the nose. I hear a crunch. I'm bleeding. And so I run in between my house and my neighbor's house, and I take off my shirt, and I'm, I'm trying to get the bleeding to stop. And I do eventually, and I, I throw the shirt in the garbage and st- stuff it under some things to try to hide the evidence so no one would ever know. And, uh, and I told my mom that I just got elbowed playing basketball, and she didn't really ask anything more of it. Until my junior year of high school, so five years later, I'm at the doctor's office because I kept getting sinus infections all the time and couldn't figure out why. So they do an x-ray. She's like, have you ever broken your nose? And my mom goes, no, he's never broken his nose. And that's when I'm like, well, actually. And so I finally told the whole story for the first time in my life about the story of how I broke my nose. And, And I guess I kept it hidden for so long and I didn't confess it. I didn't share it with anyone because I was ashamed. I was ashamed for a couple reasons. One, I was ashamed because of the words that I said to this girl. I knew my parents would be um, not very proud of me, and I was ashamed because I knew the consequences of my action would cost a lot to fix, you know, whether it was money to fix my nose in surgery, or if it was um, apologies, or if it was words, whatever it was, it was cost a lot to fix. And so I think a lot of us, we have things in our life that we don't open up, we don't share about, maybe because we're ashamed of them, maybe because we know that it's going to cost a lot to go through and fix them. But tonight I want to share with you three thoughts and three points from Scripture um, on why confessing, why confession is good and why confession is powerful. So the first one I would share with you is this, is that when we confess our sins to one another, we can find healing. We have the potential to find healing. Healing. James chapter 5. If you've got your Bibles, real quick, pause this video, go find your Bibles and follow along with me. But James chapter 5, uh, verse 16 says this Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person, righteous just meaning one who has been saved by grace through faith in Jesus, a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. James is telling us here there is potential, there is power in prayer, and we can find healing when we confess our sins to one another. So maybe you've got a group of friends tonight uh, uh, that you can hop on Xbox with, you can hop on Zoom with, or you can just have a group chat with where you can start to be open and find um, potential for healing. And then secondly, I would say this, and this is in 1 John, so skip with me to 1 John chapter 1. We confess our sins to God, and we can receive Forgiveness, And so the portion of scripture, the heading of this is literally light and darkness, sin and forgiveness. And John writes this, this is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. We are not practicing the truth, but if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. John is telling us as followers of Jesus, God is light. Jesus says in John chapter 8, he is the light of the world. He calls us to walk in that light. But then now he's saying, hey, listen, there's some things that you've done that maybe you've kept in the darkness. And the next verse, he's going to call us to bring those things, to confess those things, bring them into the light. And he says this, but if we confess our sins to him, if we confess our sins to God, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all wickedness. So God, John is telling us, hey, confess your sins to God to receive forgiveness. And I know some of you are going to be thinking, oh, that, that's crazy. There's, it just seems easier and it seems more comfortable to keep things in the dark. And maybe that's where you're at right now. But let me encourage you with this. If we turn off all the lights, if you're in your house right now, turn off all your lights and you start to walk around, what you're going to do is you're going to walk around scared. You're going to tiptoe around. You're going to have your hands out in front of you. You're going you're to walk around scared. But we know that if we're in the light, if we're in fellowship with Jesus, 2 Timothy 1.7 tells us that we do not have a spirit of timidity or fear, but one of power, love, and self-control. We know that when we walk around in the light, we walk around painfully. We stub our toe. We, we bang our hip against the table. We hit our head on something. But we know that when we walk in the light, in fellowship with Jesus, we are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17, for anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old is gone. The new is here. You have been restored from your pain. And then we know if we walk around in the dark, we walk around sad. We walk around depressed. There's been studies for years now that show the correlation between the deprivation of light and darkness and sadness and depression. But we know when we walk in the light, we have joy. We walk around joyfully. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It comes from a relationship in Jesus, and it just overflows in us this, this joy. And so we confess our sins to God for forgiveness. And the third thing I want to I talk about tonight is this different type of confession. These are a confession of guilt, but this third type of confession is to declare faith in or commitment to. And so I want to walk through a portion of scripture, 2 Corinthians 5.21. This is really the gospel in a nutshell. For God made Christ who never sinned. Jesus lived a sinless and perfect life, what I can never do and what you can never do. To be the offering for our sin on the cross, to pay the debt for my sin and to pay the debt for your sin, so that we can be made right with God. We can be reconciled back to God, with God, through Christ. Jesus lived a sinless, perfect life. He died on the cross for my sin and your sin and my place and your place so that by grace through faith and believing in his life, death, and resurrection, we can be restored back to God. And so with that in mind, here's the third type of confession tonight, is we can confess, we can admit, have faith and commitment to God. We can confess Jesus as Lord to receive salvation. And so if you've never done that before, I want to encourage you to just take some time, read this scripture with me, um, and think, does this apply to you tonight? Romans 10, verses 9 through 10. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, made right with God, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. If that's you tonight and you're not involved in our ministries, but you feel like this is where God is leading you tonight, I want you to message us on Instagram. We're going to have a conversation about it. If this is you and you're plugged into our ministries, we know that we are celebrating, we are praising God with you, and we want you to reach out to your leaders, shoot them a text, give them a call, set up a Zoom, a FaceTime, whatever it is. Um, but we want to celebrate and praise what God is doing in your lives. Pray that you guys are staying safe tonight, um, and we'll see you next week for week four. This is our sex talk. See ya.